streets Wanna be like on my knees in the night Saying prayers in the street light Alright fanboys and fangirls, it looks like Apple is ready to bring back MagSafe on the MacBook Pros, but it seems that there is going to be a catch in order for us to get that feature back. They're going to take away the touch bar, and honestly I don't think anybody's going to complain, and if there is that person that complains, you need to shut the hell up and I'll tell you why in this episode. Also there's a ton of other Mac rumors coming out, like a mini Mac Pro, an iMac redesign, everything that I will lay out, I will lay it all on the table, I'll discuss it, I'll break it down, and also Samsung is ready to finally show ship foldable displays to third-party companies and I'm gonna tell you why that is a very bad idea at least right now all that on today's episode so cue that intro yo what is happening everybody Michael here welcome back to tech Nine. Woo! we are back baby we are back I cannot believe it has been three weeks since I've been behind here, since I have seen you guys. I'm pumped up today. I've been initiated into the floor of Vibe. This shirt came straight from Orlando. Well, of course. But anyway, guys, it is so great to be back. It is so amazing to be able to produce content for you guys and to interact with all of you. Now, I know since the time that I've been away, there have been a lot of people that have joined on. And to those of you that have joined on, thank you so much. I cannot tell you how much it makes me feel and how much I appreciate having the support and the love from you guys. And also to new subscribers, thank you for clicking on the subscribe button. But today's episode, we got a ton of news. We're going to focus on Apple. Then we'll talk a little bit about Samsung. But I just want to get back into the groove. So let's not waste any time. If you enjoy the content, you enjoy what I bring to the table. If you enjoy me just being myself, energetic, full of life, better than those stereotype tech channels out there, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you do not miss when I upload. And to returning subscribers, thank you as always. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate each and every one of you. All that out of the way, let's get it going. So story number one, the main story, the Apple Mac rumors. Now, this week there had been a ton of stories, ton of things coming from Bloomberg. Mark Gurman, he's come out with a bunch of leaks and a lot of rumors that he's saying are going to happen. And he's a very reliable guy, so I definitely wanted to cover all of them. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time, but the main two stories are the return of MagSafe on the Mac and the removal of the touch bar. So without wasting any time, let's get right to it. So the first thing up is MagSafe. Now, as you know, Apple has brought back MagSafe to the iPhones, kind of bringing that feature in, and it's been adopted relatively very well by most iPhone users, as well as Belkin and other companies working to make magnetic chargers. So why not bring it back to the lineup that started it all? And that's the case because according to German, the company is finally working on a way to bring it back to the laptops. While technically, even though the iPhones do have this MagSafe quote unquote charger, the whole idea of MagSafe was if you knock on the cable, it comes right off, it doesn't knock your computer off, which was a very clever marketing gimmick and it worked, it really did its job. And according to German, it says here that Apple will be working on a way to come up with a MagSafe-like replacement. So instead of using the USB-C port, you will have to use a USB-C cable, but it will be a MagSafe charger that goes into the computer and it will help when you accidentally trip or slip. Honestly, it doesn't even matter at this point if it slips and trips. I just love MagSafe. I remember being addicted to boom, 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 take it in and out. Okay, that, that was kind of weird. But I really do hope that Apple brings this back. And considering they can make the port or wherever they put this MagSafe charger, where on the MacBook, if they put it on the side, they make it small, it doesn't matter. And honestly, I gotta say, that's a feature that everybody loved. You know, versatility is fine, but when it comes to convenience and features, I think MagSafe is one of those features where you can go, yeah, I'm willing to take it back. But in order for them to do that, it looks like they will be removing one feature that I guarantee you nobody cares about. Well, except maybe the two Apple fanboys with the glasses and the, the dorky nose. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But according to uh, German, it says here that the touch bar is reportedly on its way out. German reports that the two MacBook Pros that will be integrated with MagSafe are going to be ditching the touch bar. While there is no actual reason why they are going to remove it, speculation around is just that the general sentiment is that the touch bar was a bad idea. Trying to make that a gimmick for a pro computer just never worked. It wasn't adopted by many third parties. It wasn't adapted to a lot of users. And putting in MagSafe and taking it out is the smarter way for them to go around. And to that answer, I say, you know what, they're 100% right. 
I have a MacBook Pro 15 inch. I hardly ever use the touch bar. And if I do use a touch bar, I'm either just looking up an emoji and that's it. So I'm with German and I'm with the whole entire world. We do not need a touch bar on a pro computer. I liked the touch ID on the computer, but not a whole touch bar. It was stupid, it made no sense, so I'm really happy that if Apple does decide to ditch this, this is a good way to do it. Just use MagSafe as an excuse, and I think the world will be fine. Next up, German talks about the iMac redesign. German basically explained that the new silicone Apple Macs are on their way, they're making the rollout, and the next rollout is of course going to be a refreshed iMac. He says here that the iMac's bezels are going to be chin bumped, which are going to be really slim. They are going to be adjusted to a 21.5 inch and 27 inch design. The new iMac will most likely be holding the Pro Display XDR, which in my opinion helps kind of add to those slim bezels. So it looks like we're gonna see the silicone CPUs in these iMac redesigns and we're gonna see newer displays with slimmer bezels. I think that's the one thing we all have waited for Apple to do. I think that's one of the reasons why I have held back from buying an iMac or buying any of those because the design just looks dated. So I'm all for if they wanna update it, so I'll take it anyway. And the last rumor is a mini Mac Pro. Now this one, is a little bit of a skeptical, but according to German, he says that this is going to be a nostalgia product where they're going to try to get more pro users, but with a fraction of the cost and using the silicone based CPUs, this mini Mac Pro is going to be a design change similar to the Power Mac G4 Cube. In addition to this new computer, there is gonna be a more affordable display because as you know, the Pro XDR was $5,000 and then they actually had the balls to sell you the sand for a thousand dollars. So seeing Apple going cheaper is probably the way that everybody wants them to go. But if you know anything about Apple, they're not a cheap company. You gotta pay the premium. But I think they realize somewhere down the road that sometimes these products, they're hit or miss. They gotta figure out what works best. And overall, just the Mac lineup, everything has to come together. The main two things I already talked about in the beginning, so I hope you guys are able to understand all the Mac rumors going on right now and I gotta say, I am super excited for the future of the Mac. I am I'm really excited because for the first time, the Mac has finally come back into the spotlight. Not because of COVID-19, not because of stay-at-home orders, but because of how much more practical they are now feeling. Now with their in-house CPUs and better integration with the Apple ecosystem, this to me feels perfect. So I cannot wait to see what Apple does, and I definitely hope you guys are excited just like I am. If you are, let me know your thoughts down below. And last story, real quick, then I'm gonna end the video. Samsung is reportedly ready to supply foldable displays to rival companies. According to ARS Technica, it says here that ET News has claimed that Samsung Displays are ready to expand its foldable lineup and selling it to other companies. According to the rumor, they're saying that multiple Chinese smartphone makers are working with Samsung to plan and ship devices of a foldable nature in 2021, and the goal that they have is a million panels sold. Now listen, let me tell you guys something. I like the concept of a foldable, I like the fact that Samsung is trying to take an initiative. I do respect the fact that they are the ones pushing the foldables. I really like that they are trying to be innovative. But Samsung, come here, come here, come here. You do realize your displays are broke, right? Like, do you guys not see the news of what these foldables have done? I have covered so many times of many multiple scenarios of where these foldables have broken under weather conditions, whether it be a non-accident or any of that caliber. These displays are super fragile. So the fact that you want a million panels sold, you may have a million panels coming back, especially from third parties. Now, to be fair, I'm not trying to bash Samsung here because I like their ambitions. I like what they're trying to do. But to me, this foldable concept G still needs a lot of work. I do like the concept, I love what they're doing, but it still is far away from being a practical device. And the fact that they're going to remove the note in the future in favor of these foldables is just baffles me. So Samsung, if you really think you're that ambitious, you wanna pull the trigger, be my guest. But here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you honestly think you can sell a million panels, good luck with that. Good luck. And that's it for today's episode of Technoid. Now guys, again, this was a long episode, but I appreciate if you made it through. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you Samsung Knights and 
Apple fanboys dislike the video, hit the dislike button. That helps circulate my videos as well. Again, everyone, it is great to be back. I missed each and every one of you. I cannot wait to get back on this grind. You know, again, the views are down, the numbers are down, but you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm back, I'm here. It's gonna take a little bit of while for me to get into the groove, but I promise you guys, I am gonna get back into it. And I got one message to all of you YouTubers watching me. Oh yeah, I'm back. Thanks for watching guys. Take care everyone. I will see you all in the next episode. Have a safe day and peace.